So now it's going to change. We're going to talk about, um, well, first of all, I want to talk about, I want to talk about air. So this class, we're going to start talking about uh, air resistance, uh, which is important if you're calculating the speed that things fall at if they've been falling for a long amount of time. So if the, it, it depends on the object, um, but you had a homework question where you figured the uh, velocity of a raindrop and it came at 500 miles per hour. It's because we're ignoring air resistance. So when things fall, like for example, a feather, a feather will reach terminal velocity within a second or two. It'll just float down. Like this paper, it's, it's not a, this paper doesn't fall to the ground at 1g. It much, it's much slower because it has to push air out of the way. So air, air has mass. So it's a question. What is the mass of the air in this room? Which I guess you know where you are. OK, so some, some possible answers. Close to zero, I don't know, one gram, uh, one kilogram, uh, 10 kilograms, 100 kilograms, um, 1,000 kilograms, uh, any more space, run out of space, 10,000 kilograms, so, well, why don't we have a vote? Uh, the, the mass of the air in the room, adding it all up. Uh, a vote, zero, close to zero, small. Uh, one gram, uh, one kilogram, that's a lot, right? Kilogram's about the same as a litre of milk, maybe a pint, two pints, a pint and a half. Ten kilograms, we go for ten, we've got to vote for ten kilograms, any more? Nope. A hundred kilograms, that's a popular one, okay, give it a few. A uh, thousand kilograms. Uh, that's uh, ten thousand kilograms. So let's have a look. Um, well, you've all got the right idea. It, it's definitely a lot bigger than zero. Um, so let's figure it out. Um, at ground level, that's, oh, that's, I think that's me. The density of air. is about one kilogram per meter cubed. It's about one kilogram per meter cubed. It's easy to remember. Uh, just give you a benchmark. If you have water, water is about a thousand times more dense than air. So water is about a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. This is density. The, the symbol that we use for density, by the way, is, um, is a Greek letter rho. Like a P, but uh, with, a, with a bent tail. Uh, it has units of, well, kilograms per meter cubed. So, if we take the room, we know that for this room, here we have mass equals density times volume. Mass is density times volume, so we have the room volume. Well, it's probably about, well, I'm going to draw the room over here, because I can't fit it on there. Okay. All right, so here's the room. Uh, it's probably, say, 10 meters by 10 meters by maybe 4 meters. I'm just thinking about this room. It's an approximation because it's actually longer that way than it is this way. But 10 by 10 by 4 gives us a volume of uh, 10 times by 10 times by 4, which is 400 meters cubed, which means the mass of the, mass of the air is about 400 kilograms. 
That's the total mass of the air in this room, around about 400 kilograms. About, you know, half a car. It's quite a lot. This is about, you know, this is maybe uh, 900 pounds. Maybe. Um, notice we put a ground level. The density of air decreases significantly if you go upwards, if you go above the ground. Um, just to give you an idea of how it changes. So, I think this is important before we talk about the forces. Uh, the density of air looks something like this. This is height above the ground. Uh, this would be um, density. We can call that rho in kilograms per meter cubed. If you go upwards, it basically decreases exponentially uh, at a height of about 10 kilometers. It has a density of about one-third of a kilogram per meter cubed. At the ground, it has a density of about one kilogram per meter cubed. So it decreases exponentially. Um, this makes it very hard to breathe if you're on a mountain. Right? There's, why, is it, why can't you breathe at this height? Why is it hard to breathe? Yeah. Right, there's less oxygen. In fact, there's about a third as much oxygen. The ratio is the same. So you know air is made up of... Uh, what is air made up of? There is, there's two main gases, right? Oxygen and nitrogen, right? So nitrogen is like 78%. Uh, oxygen is 21, and then you have these other gases like carbon dioxide and water vapor or whatever, stuff like that. Um, so... The density of air decreases by about a third, so there's hardly air, there's only one third of as much oxygen at this height. This makes it hard to breathe. The temperature is interesting. If you plot the temperature against height, so here's height again. Okay, and then we plot the temperature. This could be in degrees centigrade. Uh, it goes basically from around about 20, and it does this. So here it's uh, around about 20 degrees C, which is something like, I'm guessing, it, it, is that about 68 Fahrenheit, I think? I know people work in Fahrenheit mostly here. Um, at this height of 10 kilometers, by the way, the temperature is uh, around about minus 40. Minus 40 C. It's a lot colder. And then it starts getting hot again as you go up above. Um, this region, by the way, getting a bit too, I won't be on too much meteorology, but a little bit, so I think it's interesting, is called the, um, it's called the troposphere. And the region above it is called the stratosphere. Now it's, it's relevant because we will talk about, um, at some point in the class, we talk about climate change. Uh, we talk a little bit about global warming because it's related to my interests in research and it's something that you feel you should know a bit about. Um, but basically, it's important that you're aware that there are these two layers. Um, this is where most of the air is. Most of the air is near the ground. Why do you think most of the air is near the ground? Why isn't it just the same all the way up? Guess. What do you think is keeping it down near the ground? What keeps us near the ground? It's gravity. It's, it's gravity pulls on the air, basically. And gravity pulls on the air, so the air, the air molecules that aren't moving as fast will typically be down here. The fast-moving ones will be up here. So the bulk of them are pulled to the ground, so it's basically much denser near the, near the ground. And just something to hang on to, the temperature drop per kilometer is about 6 degrees C. You lose about 6 per kilometre as you go upwards. 
Why did I do all that? Well, mainly because I want to write one thing down. And that is that air has mass. So air has mass. So we all agree that we, you know, we're convinced air has mass, which means if you push on air, pushes back on you. Yeah, exactly. So if you push on air, then it pushes back on you. And this is called, this is because of a law, which law? We, Newton's third law, right? I'll give you an example from a clip. So air has mass, so if you push on the air, it pushes back on you. Um, if you push on a larger amount of air, you get a larger reaction. So here's a clip to give you an idea. Tom Cruise is pushing on the air. What's, um, what do you think determines how, how much he pushes on the air? How, f how much force he pushes on the air with? In this, his velocity, right? Or the velocity of the train, right? So, yeah, get a light for a second. That one. So here's a picture. This is the train. Here's Tom Cruise. Standing on it at some point. And in front, there's all this air. Moving on tracks. So the air in front of the train is uh, moving in random direction all over the place. But we could say overall it's, it's stationary. The air molecules are whizzing in all directions, but we consider, consider a mass of air that's overall not moving. So, 
why is Tom pushed along the roof? Well, basically, as you said, because the train's moving. So the argument is, Tom is on the train, so he's moving with the train. So when he pushes on the stationary air, he makes that air go from a speed of zero to the speed of the train. Right? That's, the, that's kind of the key argument. So he, the, air's, the air's basically here. He moves and he has to, he causes the air to increase its speed to the speed of the train. Okay? So, Tom is moving at, we can call it a velocity if you like, uh, of V train. Okay, he's moving at the velocity of the train and he pushes on the air that has velocity u equals zero. Okay, so the air has a velocity zero, but the train's moving at v train. Okay, I'm going to pull this up to make it easier to see. Ah, sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so we have Tom moving at the velocity of the train. Tom pushes on the air that has a velocity of zero. So the air is accelerated from u equals zero to v equals v train. Okay? The air in front of him is accelerated from zero to the velocity of the train because the train's moving. And we know that acceleration requires a force. To accelerate something, you need a force, F equals MA. Okay? So the force of Tom on the air equals minus the force of the air on Tom. Okay? And this one has a name. This, this one is called drag or air resistance. Okay? So the force of the, the force of the air on Tom is called the drag. It's the Newton's third law pair of the force of Tom on the air. Okay. So I guess the question is, okay, so how can we increase this force? How can we increase the force of the air on Tom Cruise? Okay, so I'm going to write drag equals force of air on Tom is proportional to, and then we're just basically going to fill it in, okay? So, um, well, how can we increase the force? There's a different ways of doing it. But most, what's the most obvious one? If, yeah, so we increase the speed of the train, okay? So it depends on the speed of the train. Okay? So the drag depends on the speed of the train. What else could we do to increase the force? Yeah. Surface area? Yep, the surface area. So it's also, this, by the way, this means proportional to, I don't know. Proportional to. That's an alpha, okay? It means varies as. 
depends on, okay? So yeah, the, uh, the area of the train, so it's also proportional to the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area uh, of Tom, if you like. In other words, if he stands up, it's harder than, there's a stronger force if he stands up than if he's lying down because he's pushing on a larger mass of air. Simple, Newton's third law. You push on a larger mass, you require a bigger force. The acceleration is the same, right? Because it's just the air going from zero to the velocity of the train. But if you increase the area, it's a bigger mass of air, so it's a bigger force. Um, okay, so we also, what else? If, well, I don't know if we can vary it, but it also depends on, what else do you think? Something that, it would, something that would change if the train went up a mountain, let's say. If the train went, went up a high mountain, what would change? We talked about it, yeah? Anybody? Yeah. So it also depends on, I'm going to call that FAT, okay? Just so you air on Tom. So FAT will also depend on the density of air. Okay. In a vacuum, he could stand up, you know? I mean, they're, they're, there's, there's a train they're building, I think it's in China right now. The only way you can get a train to go really fast is to reduce drag, typically. And they, have that, they can make the shape really sleek, and that allows the air to flow past it more easily. It's aerodynamics. But if you could take the air out, then you'd have, all, you'd have zero drag. So they're designing a, it's, it's going to be, in, it's a train that would go through a tunnel that has all the air pumped out. And then it could go up to maybe a thousand miles an hour because there's no limitation because of the drag. Um, obviously, you'd have air in the train, but um, that would basically bring this term way down, which obviously would reduce the drag significantly. Um, so FAT, we could say, is equal to rho A V squared, where this is the cross, where A is the cross-sectional area over here, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to call that, I'm going to call the speed V, area A, density, I use that, that funny symbol, rho, okay? So we're trying to come up with an equation for drag, okay? So we have rho A V squared. I mean, the why, why V squared? Okay, That's a good, I mean, that would be a decent question, why not just V, okay? Um, There are different ways of explaining why it's v squared. Um, it's, and it's not that important um, in terms of, you don't need to be able to derive it, uh, but I should, I'd like to show you why. Uh, the main reason is because it makes the units match. So if we look at the units of this, and the units of this, and the units of this, it matches with v squared, it doesn't match with v. That tells us something. This is called dimensional analysis. It's a technique used in physics and engineering to figure out whether an equation is correct. You need to match the units. So uh, y v squared, because the units match, what do I mean by the units match? I'm just going to quickly do that for you. Um, I mean that the units of F A T have the same units as rho A V squared. Rho A V squared. Okay? So I'll do that. All I'm going to do is fill, in, fill it in. So what are the units of F A T? What's, what are the units of force? Anybody in terms of kilograms, ma meters, seconds? Um, someone at the back there. Kilograms, like that, yeah? Okay, simply because F equals MA, right? Force is mass times acceleration, mass has units of kilograms, A is in meters per second squared, okay? What about the units, so we have kilograms per meter squared here, what about the units of rho? So this would be kilograms 
over meters cubed, units of A, meters squared, units of V, meters per second, okay? And if we square that here and we simplify, we end up with basically, um, we've got four on the top, three on the bottom. So that would cancel with that, with that, and with that. And we'd end up with kilograms, uh, meters per second squared, okay? It doesn't work for any other quantity. If you just use V, that won't work. So all I've done here is just to show that this is the right equation, put in the units for rho, the units for A, and the units for V squared, and they match, okay? But what, what else does drag depend on? Okay, what else? What else does drag depend on? Anybody? I haven't, there's something that's not in there. I mean, are all cars the same in terms of the air resistance? I mean, people spend billions of dollars trying to figure out how to make a car, how to reduce the drag on a car. And you can only do so much with row A and V. So what else? What determines how the drag on a car? The shape, right? The shape is a big factor. And you can actually have the same cross-sectional area, but a different shape. Okay? So it also depends on the shape. So shape. Okay. In other words, this is, me this is measured by the drag coefficient. Drag coefficient. We use a, sim a symbol C capital D, okay? Let me give you an example. So the drag coefficient has a value between zero and let's say two, okay? Two being a lot of drag, zero being hardly any. Let me show you something with a low drag. Low CD, that would look like this, if the air was going this direction. Because the air can basically flow over it easily. Something with a high CD would look like this because the air cannot flow easily over it. They can have the same area. The cross-sectional area, A, can be the same. So we're not changing A, but we are changing the shape. Okay? It's just easier for air to flow over this object than it is over this one. You can see it from Newton's third law. Basically, this hits the block, the block pushes back on the air. This one, the air flows right over it, so it's not redirected as much. It's, how, it's a question of how much you redirect the air. Um, that's Newton's third law. So I'm going to put the clip up. Um, oh, one final thing, I just want to write the final equation because you're going to use it a lot in uh, homeworks and exams, etc. So putting that all together, we end up with the uh, drag force, okay, the drag force or air resistance is equal to a half rho CD uh, A V squared and the half is, comes from experiments. In other words, the reason why there's a half there, you can only really figure out by doing experiments in wind tunnels with various shapes. So a wind tunnel, you fire, the, you fire the air at an object and you measure the drag on it. And they found that the drag depends on a half rho CD AV squared. Okay? So I put the half here. From a physics point of view, it doesn't really make too much difference for us. But if you look, look up drag on the internet, you'll see there's a half there. Okay? So we get used to using a half. Um, so for the clip, we'd like to know what this is, what this is, 
than what this is, but that's part of a homework problem, uh, or maybe an exam, I can't remember. But you, you need to look at clips and figure out, at CD I would give you a value, okay? You can't really expect you to figure that out. Though often if in a homework, you, can, you, you should look these things up. So you look up drag coefficient on, on Wikipedia, it'll give you values for people, for cars, for feathers, etc. cetera. Uh, a, you have to estimate his cross-sectional area when he's lying down. So if he's lying down on the train, his cross-sectional area, maybe it's, maybe it's half a meter by a quarter. Maybe it's an eighth of a meter squared, something like that. But that's the kind of thing that you get used to doing, okay? And the velocity would be typical velocity of a train.